diagnosed with hypothyroidism, what thyroid hormone, hormone replacement is prescribed and how long does a dog uh, need to take it? Okay. Well, typically, if it's true primary hypothyroidism, the animal will need therapy for life. Occasionally, animals and people go into remission. We don't understand why that is. It's called vanishing hypothyroidism. It was first recognized in Japan, which is pretty interesting because that's where most of the thyroiditis cases first appeared after we did what we did to Japan. Um, and it's called Hashimoto's disease for that reason. And occasionally, one in I don't know how many thousand cases, it could disappear. But that's really unusual. So classically, primary hypothyroidism requires treatment for life. The treatment has to be thyroxin. It can either be the synthetic form, which most of us use, or a natural form, uh, such as Armour Thyroid or West Thyroid or Nature Thyroid or Urfa in Canada. But typically we use synthetic thyroid and we prefer the brand name products over generics. Because remember that in humans, the half-life is five to seven days. And so a little difference in the dose isn't gonna make a big deal if you give it once a day. In the dog, the half-life is 12 to 16 hours. And so the product should best be given twice daily. And a little bit of difference, especially if you're a toy breed, can make a lot of difference in the end stage effect of what you're trying to achieve. Okay. So are some brands better tolerated than others Is from your experience for big dog versus smaller dogs? I'm sorry, some what is tolerated better? Are some brands better tolerated oh, than other brands? No, it's not a toleration issue. Okay. It's a clinical efficacy issue. Okay. And yes, some of the major trade names are more clinically effective in the dog, for example, than would be the human products that are used most often. And many people that are in the medical profession think that they can use their human products in the dog. And we don't always get equivalent clinical response. And we don't really know the reason for that. Could be the fillers, who knows? So we prefer brand name veterinary products. That's what they were made for. That's what they're intended for. And even though they're slightly more expensive than generic, the difference is minuscule. Okay. So can I do anything else besides the medication for my dog? Nutrition, supplementation? Absolutely. You need to feed your animal optimally. Um, uh, nutrition that, that's healthy and balanced. The same with supplements and treats. You want to avoid excessive iodine in, in uh, treats and supplements, however, if you're feeding a commercial kibble because those kibbles have way too much iodine. Uh, it's been recently implicated in hyperthyroidism in cats where there's too much iodine in commercial cat foods and so you get hyperactivity. Whereas in the dog, we get hypoactivity, and you can even promote the production of thyroid autoantibodies with too much iodine. So that's really important that we don't overdo it by giving seaweed, for example, as a source of kelp every day to an animal that's on a commercial kibble. If they're eating a home-cooked or a raw diet, then they can have additional supplements daily without worries of over-supplementation. So we've created the uh, iodine effect by having commercial pet foods just add more because they're trying to help protect the thyroid. So nutrition is critical. You can also use thyroid support. Um, there are supplements that are intended to support the thyroid gland to allow it to do its job better. Um, we had a case that I just did last night in an animal that had a highly positive thyroglobulin autoantibody assay, needed to be on thyroid supplement, the pet owner decided they wouldn't do that. They were going to treat the animal homeopathically. They were going to hope that would work. They waited five months and they redid it and the animal's thyroid is totally wiped out. It does not work if there's true primary hypothyroidism because this is not a gland that can regenerate. The, the tissues are destroyed forever. It's not the liver where if you can fix the liver, it'll grow more liver. <laughs> it yeah. can't do that. So we have to be very careful about assuming that alternatives to the natural or synthetic thyroxin drug will totally replace what's needed. Okay. So how do I know that my dog is getting the right dose? They can't speak. They only bark. Um, and if he's experiencing some symptoms, what do I do to correct it? Okay. Um, the first thing you have to do when the veterinarian prescribes a dose of thyroid hormone taken hopefully twice a day without food, it needs to be given an hour before or three hours after any foods or treats that contain calcium or soy because calcium and soy binds to the drug and they will prevent it from being absorbed in a steady state. 
So anyway, you then will look at the dog and you'll make sure that there are no signs of restlessness, panting, pacing, drinking too much water, just being hyperactivity, uh, showing hyperactivity. Because that might mean that for this particular animal, the expected dose was too high. And so what most of us would do was say, cut the dose in half for three to five days and see if the restlessness and panting goes away. And then the real dose that dog needs may be somewhere in between. So after about six to eight weeks on thyroid therapy, you bring the dog back into your veterinarian and at four to six hours after the morning pill, which is gonna be around the noon hour, you're going to get another sample and they're gonna test at the peak time post pill to see if the animal's dose is adequately elevated and certainly not too high. If it's not high enough, it'll be changed you know, upwards. If it's too high, it'll be reduced downwards. And then you check every six to 12 months after that, depending on the individual situation or need. Okay, so if a dog is suffering from this disease, um, is the dog at risk for any long-term health problems? Well, interestingly, um, if hypothyroidism is not diagnosed properly, like this particular case I told you about where the well-meaning misguided pet owner wanted to use homeopathy instead of treatment for thyroiditis, which cannot work, doesn't matter how much we believe in homeopathy, then you know your animal can be at risk for other things like uh, secondary problems with the bone marrow, uh, hemolytic anemia, or no platelets, thrombocytopenia, or chronic active liver disease, or inflammatory bowel disease, or leaky gut syndrome, or chronic kidney disease, or chronic adrenal disease, or chronic skin disease, or chronic urinary tract infections, anything chronic ears, yeast that, that grows all in the ears and the, between the feet and on the body that when you smell the ears, you pass out. Um, it's, it can be that bad because the thyroid controls the function of all the tissues, all the enzymes, all the organs in the body. And if it's not working properly, they can't work properly either. Okay.